The Airbus A350 entered service in the mid-2010s, and since then, the aircraft family has really become a leader in the wide-body scene, and Airbus has continued to look to find ways to develop this aircraft family to take more market share away from its competitor, Boeing, but also just provide solutions to various airlines' requirements. The A350-2000, also known as the A350 Stretch, has been thrown around as a prospective new variant in the family to aid future replacement efforts on several occasions. It has also been a focus here on the channel before, but we sit today about to move into 2025 with this aircraft variant not being moved forward with. Instead, Airbus is sticking to what it knows and exploring alternative pathways to secure more market share. So did the A350-2000 simply fail, or was it just a plane that never really had a firm future? So firstly, what is this Ash 2000 I speak about? Well, probably it will not come as a shock to you that in essence, it would be a stretch on the Dash 1000 with the primary objective looking to add capacity to customers, seeking more seats on their aircraft across key, very high density markets. The A350 1000, which can accommodate over 400 passengers, give or take, is considered the perfect high capacity alternative for long haul flying on market at the moment. Arguably, it is also really the only option alongside the 7779, but a prospective A350-2000 would have offered something different. Such a variant would address any potential concerns surrounding the replacement of the A380 and 7478, which will be exiting airlines fleets across the next decade if they haven't already. The Dash 2000 has long been rumoured to be 4 metres longer and capable of seating 50 additional passengers if it all in, say, economy, but it just offers great prospects to airlines because those additional meters can be translated into more upper class seating, a wellness zone, or something else. This variant, while proposed in the mid 2010s, didn't progress at the rate maybe that other derivatives would have, usually to see the green light arrive. So, why did the aircraft variant that seemed to be of interest to Airbus essentially fail and fade into obscurity? One of the primary reasons why an A350-2000 did not eventuate was driven actually by Airbus's priorities as the 2020s developed. At one point, the plane maker was in a position where the A350 had only just entered service and enjoyed quite a lot of success, so therefore finding ways to grow that success was essential moving forward. And as a result, Studies very early on began looking into how the plane maker could develop the aircraft. This included, but was not just limited to the A350-2000, with some talk so early on sitting on a prospective A350neo to elevate the program into the 2020s. However, with two available variants, the development of the A350 ULR for Singapore Airlines and other prospective ideas, the manufacturer's priorities began to shift. And it's also worth mentioning that it is totally normal for aircraft manufacturers when launching a program to discuss the very many possibilities at extending a program's life through other variants with a smaller, larger, extended range, a longer body, the opportunity are just endless, and it takes a quick Google search to look at aircraft such as the 777, the 747, and the many variants that were once mentioned that never eventuated. There are pros and cons to this. Could it be deemed as a waste of resources? Some may argue yes, but others would probably put forward the proposition that all these studies help in pushing Airbus in the right direction. For if they didn't study this, maybe another variant wouldn't come out. Maybe they wouldn't learn something valuable. It's them doing their due diligence. As the 2010s came to a close, the A350-2000 seemed like a less optimal choice. When the 2020s arrived, well, a global pandemic decimated traffic and Airbus found itself in preservation mode, with output dropping and airlines halting orders. 
While the A350 series and even the existing A350-1000 were always going to be needed, Airbus began examining other means to advance the program. And therein lies really what they've looked for as the future. The advancement of the program has been noticeable through two primary variants, what is known as the A350-1000 ULR and A350F. Airbus's own ULR for the Dash 1000 model is being specifically built for Australian flag carrier Qantas and its Project Sunrise ambitions. This order came about as part of that airline's call for manufacturers to essentially offer them a true ultra long haul and efficient wide body. Qantas will use the A350-1000 ULR on flights from Sydney to London and Sydney to New York to just name a few of the possibilities that are really going to show you what is possible all without a single stop, pushing the limit of non-stop travel while what is really important to mention still having economy class present. Are these flights going to be more expensive than say having a stopover in Los Angeles to New York? Absolutely. But economy class is going to mean pro Project Sunrise, if you're after that convenience, will be widely available to the masses. Once delivered to the airline, the A350-1000 ULR is really the perfect example of how you can amend an aircraft without reworking it too much to ensure that it is still going to provide as a solution to airlines requiring something different. And it isn't just the Dash 1000 ULR that has burst onto the scene. The A350F is another perfect example of the plane maker's attempts to enter another market and look to excel. While the jury's out about the long-term prospects of the A350F, this this freighter is part of a next generation in cargo offerings and is arguably Airbus's real attempt to compete with Boeing for the first time in a while with a product it really believes in. While the A350-2000 may, yes, not have been launched, the variants I've just touched on do increase the reliance on the A350 and its purpose for companies. And for example, while an A350-1000 can exist, for a company like Qantas, they can leverage that model to really use it to their advantage in a ULR capacity. These variants will be successful for their purpose, but it won't deter away from the already existing variants that are the base models that can continue to see orders come in. So, did the A350-2000 fail? Well, it's not necessarily the case when analysing why the plane maker decided not to proceed with the variant. While adding capacity to the Dash 1000 could have solved some airlines' replacement efforts at attempts to offer high-capacity planes across key routes, studies showed that there were greater possibilities for the plane maker. And really, from an airline standpoint, bar maybe Emirates, how many airlines were calling out publicly for a capacity increase on the Dash 1000. The A350F and the A350ULR, that being for the Dash 1000, will complement the A350 program in multiple ways, providing solutions to operators while really slotting in with the base models. Other factors such as the industry's complex climate have deterred some further derivatives from really taking shape and the focus has shifted elsewhere. So what are your thoughts? A350-2000, yay or nay? Are you in the camp where you believe this would have been a fantastic option for airlines looking to replace their ultra high capacity aircraft that have four engines? Or do you believe the new variants that have come in the last few years are way better options to really enhance the reliance on the 350 in a suitable and cost effective way? Let me know down below in the comments. Thanks a bunch for your support. Take care, be safe, and I'll see you in a couple of days. And we'll fly.